you can come out of your body into we call this physical reality or everyday reality and you can go and see people you can't speak to them but you can see people walking down the road walking in the street you can enter also more subtle realms where you can have experience with entities or beings but then you can have what we call double perception so this is what i mean about not having certain ideas about reality Hi Jade, how are you doing today? And welcome to Wisdom from North. Hi, I'm doing very good, thank you. Glad to be here finally having this conversation. I'm so excited about what we're going to speak about today, astral projection. And I'm just so happy that I found you because I saw you on a conference speaking about astral projection, like it was this natural thing. And also for me, it has been part of my spiritual journey, a big, big part that I've been wanting to speak more about. Because for me, I had some out-of-body experiences 10 years ago, and that gave me the proof that I actually exist out of my body. Before that, it was just a belief that I believe there was something more to birth and death, but now I knew, and that was just huge for me. So I would love to start with hearing about your first experience with, with an out-of-body experience, because I have understood that that's where it all just opened up to you and became this big passion. So can you take us through that story? Yes. Well, there were kind of like two main points. The first one um, is basically I had experiences as a child. So uh, the, the I would be lying in bed and I would feel myself floating out of my body. I would have these sensory perceptions of energy flowing through me um, and numerous sensory things. Uh, we call this the vibrational state and it was super scary. I didn't want it to continue. I didn't know what it was. And I told my mom and my mom was like, okay, we need to do something about this. Maybe we'll take you to see a child psychologist, but we didn't end up doing that. And I realized if I slowed down my breathing, it would bring this altered state of awareness to a stop. So that's what I did. And then that was about for six or seven years. Fast forward to the future. I'm an adult, I'm married, I run my own company and I go into a bookshop and I pick up a book by Robert Monroe called Journeys Out of the Body. And I start reading it and I think, oh my God, this is what was happening to me as a child. This is the experience I was happening. Is it, is it real? It, it wasn't just a dream. So I thought, I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to try and do some of his techniques. So I did them for a month and nothing happened. So I thought, maybe it's just a lucid dream. I've been a lucid dreamer for 15 years. So kind of know what it is. Maybe it was just that. And then one night I got up and came back from the toilet to slip straight into the vibrational state. So I slip back into this altered state, vibrations going through my body, the whole room feels like it's shaking, it's like I'm in a vacuum, there's energy flowing, I'm seeing colors, there's lights, I'm getting electrical charges through my hands, and then I go, okay, stay calm, because <laughs> this is one of the things that can send you back to your body is overreacting and try and do an exit technique. So I did something that I teach called the rollout technique. I rolled out of my physical body. As soon as I thought to stand up, I stood up in my room. I looked back at myself, saw myself lying there. And um, I mean, this is a whole like long, long, long journey. I went into, I flew out the window, I went into the street. I managed to verify the experience by getting a door number, which I came back to my body and then reviewed that it was the same door number. Uh, I entered the tunnel of light, which many near death experiences do. Um, and I experienced myself as an energy body, a light body, I had heightened sensory perception. So it absolutely blew my mind. Uh, and I thought, this is, not the same as plant medicine, psychedelics, ayahuasca. This is not the same as a lucid dream, both of which I've had many of. Um, what the heck is this? So I decided to leave my career um, in dance and go and study at university to see what was going on psychologically, um, rather than going down the spiritual route of things, because I kind of knew what they said. They said, oh, a spirit or soul is leaving the body. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Um, and I studied some of that within shamanism and the Tibetan Buddhist lineage, living in a Tibetan Buddhist temple for five years. But I wanted to know, okay, what does transpersonal psychology suggest? How is the relationship between consciousness and the brain? 
working when we have an out-of-body experience is what we think happening actually happening uh, or is there something far more mysterious so that's the experience that sent me really on this kind of journey into astral projection and out-of-body experiences wow wow uh oh sorry it's just it's it keeps talking to me uh, <laughs> that's okay <laughs> i would love to ask a little bit did you get some answers to the big questions when you had that out-of-body experience. You said you were in a tunnel with the light. Were you amazed by that perspective of life? Yeah, I mean, well, when I... One of the biggest things for people that have out-of-body experiences, and this is documented in some of the studies, usually the biggest thing is seeing your physical body as number one. There's, there's, there's several different commonalities, which how it can like completely change someone's perception. Um, and one is seeing your physical body. I call this the outer view effect. You may have heard of the overview effect, which is when astronauts go into space and they look back at the Earth from a far distance and they realize how small they are. They have this cognitive shift of awareness. They see themselves differently in relation to the world and they go back, they're often less materialistic. They are more compassionate. They have a sense of interconnectedness, serenity, and that really changes their view of how they operate in the world. So when we come out of the physical body and you look back at it, a similar process happens. You transcend identification with your physical body meaning that you do not self-identify solely with your physical form anymore. You have a belief that maybe you're a spirit, maybe you're a soul, maybe that consciousness goes on, maybe that you are energy and an extension of the universe. Whatever it is for you, usually there is this not belief. We can believe that we are a spirit by reading it in books, but to have direct experience of knowing a, a gnosis, a spiritual realization that you are actually more than your physical body can completely change people's lives. In fact, they often come back from this experience and this is just talking about the out of you effect, not all the other stuff that can happen. They can come back, they sometimes change careers, they sometimes leave their partners, they decide to get into different sorts of work, they have a lot of fear drop. One of my students, uh, sorry, case studies, Peter uh, left school. He told he was never would never amount to anything. He was very scared of education. His teachers said he was going to be a failure. And he ended up getting into rock and roll. He was a musician. He was addicted to alcohol. And he had an out-of-body experience. And in that, he lost all of his fear. He said it was like meeting God. He said he came back from that experience, a changed person, and ended up leaving all of his past life behind and enrolled at a university to do his uh, degree in philosophy. He's completed that and is now enrolled at Greenwich University to do his MSc in philosophy, none of which would have happened had he not had that out-of-body experience. So this, this is one example of the overview effect. But then within that, Within when someone actually actually projects, there's also the stuff that happens, the content. OK, where do you go? Uh, what messages do you get? Who do you meet? Is there a guide? Is there not a guide? Are you going to a realm? If you go to a realm, which realm are you going to? There's so many things that can change um, how you how you perceive yourself in the world, because that is the greatest change. That's why people have this domino effect of the rest of the things in their life. And from my studies, which I did for my MSc, my master's, I looked at what are the common transformative traits. So if someone has one, regardless of what the content is, whether they go into space or whether they just come out in their bedroom, what, what are the things that everybody experiences across the board? So there were seven commonalities. I may not remember them all, I have ADHD. So one was losing uh, fear of death. It just goes, fear of death, gone, or, radically reduced and we know this even from virtual reality experiences of astral projection so they put people into headsets give them a pretend obe that mimics astral projection and their reduced death anxiety goes down that's not even a real one so they have this reduced fear of death they feel less anxious they have more increased inner peace they um feel that they have a change in their spiritual beliefs they have a loss and gain of friendship so this means 
they let go of people in their lives and they meet new people or want to meet new people. They also have a big catalyst. So it's like this is the whirlwind that spins them into a different step of life. So this is a huge motivation for a big change. That change often relates to the content of the OBE, meaning that they might experience something that they then go, oh my God, I need to go for that job. Oh my God, I am a spirit and I need to be in service of other people, whatever it is. Um, they have that big change in their lives. And this is because what most people don't realize is that outer body experiences are evolutionary. So they happen for survival and evolutionary purposes. So the content that we get from that ends up in informing our life in some way. It's like this, it's like a um a call from the soul to go, aha, look at this. Look at this thing here in the outer body experience that you need to see. And this is particularly with spontaneous OBEs. Uh, so it's a call from the psyche, Greek word for soul, to self-actualize into being a new sense of self and a new path in life. Um, so yeah. yes, this is why they can be so transformative. And they, they're actually more radical than what we call peak experiences. So some of your viewers may have heard of this in psychology, a peak experience is something that is often quite awe-inspiring. There might be an intensity of time and space. There might be an insight that they have. It can be quite, um, it can be quite very moving, a mystical experience, an experience of awe. Out-of-body experiences aren't even classed as that. They're classed above that as an exceptional human experience. The difference between a peak experience and an exceptional human experience is that the exceptional one can actually um, re it can break down your sense of self in, in a similar way to some of the strong psychedelics can, like ayahuasca, and then rebuild it back up. Whereas a peak experience will influence your behavior and perception. An exceptional experience will knock down the house and then rebuild a palace. So sometimes as an effect, you can have a period of introspection, self-reflection, because what you thought was true or real actually isn't what you thought it was. And that can be the house crumbling down, but then what arises afterwards, as Stanislav Grof said, one of the founders of transpersonal psychology, is that then you rebuild this new sense of self that you self-actualize into being. So it was quite a long-winded way of answering your question. <laughs> it was insightful in some way. I love that. And I have so many other questions, but I thought it was very interesting what you said, especially that this is for evolutionary uh, causes as well, because I, I was wondering, are we playing God here? It, am I meant to be doing this? Can it be scary? Uh, can I all of a sudden not come back? So let's do some basics um, for those who are a bit new to this. So uh, you mentioned the vibrational state, and I it was so great when you mentioned that when I watched you on um, the conference, because I haven't spoken to that many people about this. And I was like, yes, that vibrational state. I, I experienced that. And you spoke about it as, yeah, that, that is normal. Uh, and that validated really my experience. What happened to me was that I lied down. I was focusing on a mantra uh, again and again and again, visualizing it. And then I started to vibrate. And then I had learned some techniques. And I think you have the same that you roll over. So I sort of rolled out of my body. Now. What I'm curious about is from your perspective, where do I go? Where do you go? Okay, so I'm here in the physical world and I roll out of my body with sort of another body. Where am I? Because you, you spoke about different realms. What is that first realm where we go? Um, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so this is the big question and, and effectively what underpins your question is what is the nature of reality? So right. if we are to answer, where do we go? It depends on what we believe about the world around us and our reality. So from different psychological perspectives, you know, the sh some of the shamanic views would say you go to the spirit world. Um, in the um, spiritualist tradition, they may say you go to the afterlife. In the Buddhist tradition, they say you go to different dimensions of mind. So it depends on what we believe about reality. Now, my personal opinion is that 
and my inner philosopher may come out so I'll try to keep it short so one of the strong ideas is that um, consciousness uh, so our, our psyche our mind and our self within that um, isn't limited to the physical body anyway and that the way that we perceive reality interacts with consciousness some believe that consciousness it pervades everything now everything is consciousness everything is the universe and everything is an expression of self it's a very new age view um, and then there are other ones for example in physics as well that says well you know um can is consciousness intertwined with the molecules of energy is there some information um in consciousness that when we die that information somehow exists maybe not in the way that we think um but somehow it goes on because information cannot be destroyed which is one of the hard fast rules of physics so if this is true if somehow our mind consciousness can interact with reality we have to take into view okay then so are the places that we come out to a a is is there even an objective reality meaning so objective reality is the one we all experience our con consensus reality that we can do scientific experiments if someone in japan and someone in england do the same experiment scientifically they should get the same results right um, because this is objective reality so is there an objective reality do we just get the same results because for whatever reason we're all humans and uh, there are all the same properties in things um or or is this something else so in many spiritual traditions that do believe that consciousness pervades reality in some sort of way there are different sorts of dimensions and different sorts of realms that you can kind of come out into and these have subtleties and densities it's on a spectrum of physicalness really and this can be from feeling um when you come out in the OBE, let's say in this reality, it feels very physical. You can put your hand through something and you still get a physical sensation, even though you don't have a hand, you have a, an energy hand or a light hand. Um, but then you can have experiences of OBEs where you have no physical, no energy body. We call this the astral body at all. You're just a floating point of awareness. So you're more subtle. You have less density, although you still remain. You're the the um the core of your identity your individual self is still there here and here in these different dimensions so we can come out into these subtle different planes and I mean Robert Monroe who's one of the people who first started looking at our body experiences from a scientific perspective in a secular way said that they were three locales in his early days he said there's the physical world locale one and then locale two, he said, were the astral planes, which was kind of like a duplicate of this world, um, but not exactly the same that you can move into. I often point out in Stranger Things when Eleven goes into the Upside Down, if anyone has seen the show on Netflix, um, it's, very yeah. it's very similar to the Upside Down, except without the monsters. Um, so this kind of like duplicate uh, mirror world. And then you have Locale 3, which is cosmic planes of existence with completely different physics, completely different cultures, completely different life forms. And this is when you hear about people leaving their bodies going to different planets, into different star systems and coming back and their minds being blown. So that would be those types of ones. So there are lots of different places we can go. Most beginners end up popping out into this plane. Not all of them, but quite a few. You come out of your body, you're in your room, and then you wander around your room. I'm like, oh my God, you have access to the universe. Why are you just wandering around your house? And it's because beginners don't know what to do. That they, they, they have no idea. And also they're often quite shocked. They're in awe of like, oh my God, I've come out of my body. And that in itself can be very transformative. One of my case studies uh, for my dissertation, the only thing that he did, he sat up out of his body he was in um, he was in his room and he was so shocked like this is crazy he went back to his body straight away that changed his life he didn't go anywhere he didn't see anything he just sat up out of his body and he was still had his legs in his physical body it was only his top half that sat up um, and he was in his room and that changed his life never mind these big great stories of going to different planes so the impact of these experiences and these different planes 
that we can go to uh, can be very powerful. And this is the stuff that the yogis have known, the shamans have known, um, the medicine women have known in many different indigenous cultures. They call it different names and they have different cultural interpretations, um, but effectively it's the same thing. And all of the main five religions, the big ones, all say the same thing as well. They have different names for the astral planes and the different beings that are there from the spiritual perspective. Yeah, it's one of those things that uh, you, when you've experienced it, you just know. Uh, but before you have experienced it, you can come with all these theories about, about that. Oh, it's just in your head. It's just your imagination. But I feel when you've been out of your body, you know that you've been out of your body. That's that's how I felt it. It was so real. It actually felt even more real. You mentioned touching things. I felt that I was smelling and touching things that it was more that my senses were stronger. I remember I was just shocked. Like I can feel this more than in my physical uh, reality. Yeah. What did scare me a little bit, I remember, was that when I was in the vibrational state, I heard some noises and cries that were just so awful. Uh, it was almost like it was like a choir who was like screaming and crying and shrieking. Um, it wasn't very pleasant, so I got scared. Uh, I think I managed to go through. Uh, it was so many years ago. I think I managed to just, you know, uh, not become afraid and go back to my body. I, I just accepted it, but it was very unpleasant. So can you speak a little bit about why is that and the darkness that potentially we can meet? Uh, are there beings who don't want us to wake up? Because that's what I uh, was taught in the course that helped me uh, manage to go out of my body. Uh, that there are beings who don't want us to uh, become more enlightened and uh, get this information. So I felt that they tried to stop me or sabotage me. Can you speak a little bit about mm. that? Yeah, no, that's a really good question. Let me answer the first one first about the um, the different sounds that you were hearing and, and speaking to that. So it's a when we are in the vibrational state or ready to lift beyond the body, it's a bit like a radio tuning. So if you know one of those really old radios and you turn the knob and it kind of goes, and then it'll tune into something that'll be talking about an advert and then it'll tune into something else and it could be telling a story. So when we are in the in-between space and we're about to shift out that transition, we might hear singing we might hear one of the one of my students on my courses heard beautiful angelic singing and she didn't leave her body but she knew she was tuning into a, a what she perceived to be an angelic realm and she said it was it was so moving she couldn't embody it she, she couldn't stay with it because it was just bringing so much beautiful things up in her so she actually she before she even got a chance to leave she snapped out the altered state but you can tune into Diff different sorts of places now it could be that we are tuning into a particular realm or dimension with certain qualities and feelings and people and beings but it also could be we're tuning into an event that's happening related to the things that we're hearing and seeing so it's not always um a bit what we think what our perception oh it's a being or it's a place for and i'll give you an example of that um Graham Nichols, who wrote the book Navigating the Outer Body Experience, um, as part of his, it's a very long story, he has on record one of the most evidenced prophetic outer body experiences, meaning he had an experience of the future. He saw the uh, Soho bombing uh, five days before it occurred with lots of details. He then told five of his researchers uh, what had happened and five days later everything he said that would happen happened he saw it in the OBE but as part of that OBE at the beginning he tuned into the um, the sadness and the pain that the people were going through at the point of impact when it actually exploded and he heard all these screams this chaos and he was like so scared but he did what you did which is fantastic which is managed to keep calm not put, spin our own story over it and then actually shift out so sometimes what we think is happening isn't necessarily happening which is why i call this uh, maturity so we have emotional maturity uh, as an astral projection many beginners have a a, a more immature uh which is normal uh 
emotional maturity, which is being scared of everything because you think, oh my God, am I going to be attacked? Am I going to be possessed? Am I not going to come back to my body? Am I not going to die? So we take all of our fears with us. But if we can be mindful and present, we can meet some of these things and they might not appear uh, as they seem. So that was an, a case as with um, Graham. Now, the second thing is there are what we call dark OBEs, and a lot of the time they can be shadow OBEs. So a shadow is a term from the psychologist um, Carl Jung, and I'll just briefly, in case your viewers don't know what it is, it is the shadow is something we all carry. It's part of our unconscious mind and it is anything we have disowned, denied or suppressed about ourselves, And we've pushed it into the background. It's often related to trauma uh, and fears. And so when we have an OBE, because there are many different realms and they are entangled with our own consciousness, we may end up going to places that are landscapes which connect and resonate with a part of our own mind almost like we are operating on the same frequency and that's why we have access to them i often say the places we go is is from a prism so we are the prism and there's all the juicy stuff in the prism floating about that are us our personality our likes our dislikes our beliefs our attitude and light comes through the prism and then a rainbow splays out from that triangle. So if we are the triangle, the prism, and the rainbow splays out from our consciousness, the different parts of the rainbow, red, blue, yellow, black, pink, uh, not black, because that's not a color, you can access those astral planes. So if we have part of our prism that has trauma, that will be one of the astral planes we can access. <laughs> And so you might have a dark OBE and in that you can actually meet your trauma and integrate it. But most people think that is something scary. I don't want to go there. I don't want to see it. And they run away, um, which is a shame because they've missed this great opportunity for healing because there is a reason why we are having that experience. So it's good if we can build the courage and the confidence and the self-knowledge that nothing can hurt us in the astral planes because we are in control of our own experiences. If something's really scary, you can just leave as well. And again, that's the maturity of the attitude of the astral projection, knowing I have the power, I can just leave. Um, so in these experiences, we can meet it and then have a very powerful healing experience. So these are shadow OBs. Now, for the last bit about different beings and entities, there must be, if there are many different planes, many different dimensions, many different life forms other than our own, it would be very arrogant to say, no, we are the only intelligent ones in a universe that has billions of billions of galaxies and planets. Well, then they surely must have different um, attitudes and behaviors. We call this astral wildlife. So there are all sorts of astral wildlife. So maybe I can't really speak to beings with bad intentions or good intentions. Uh, I think that's quite a dualistic way of, of looking at it as well, which I think some of the old esoteric beliefs are, are more aligned with. Um, however, because the universe is so fast, who knows? Who am I to say yes or no? Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. But there is certainly things you can put in place uh, if that is a belief that you can then, you can uh, approach those things as it happens. There's lots of protection stuff. There's lots of dealing with your, your own beliefs. So you don't align with those frequencies and end up going there. There are numerous things you can do if you meet something that you perceive is negative or malevolent. And I teach these mainly to beginners. And then over the years as they realize, okay, I've always come back. I've never been hurt. I've always had a lesson. Um, and then you start to drop doing these different protection things. I don't do any protection uh, things before I, I leave the body. Um, I just I just do things within the experience itself if I feel like I need to. Sometimes I might sometimes I might call in a guide if I feel like I'm struggling with something in particular. But in regards of protecting myself, I think if you have the notion I'm going to protect myself. You're saying there is danger and I'm going to face danger. And you can actually attract that to you in the same way we can attract experiences to us with our beliefs or we see them within this reality. Yeah, that's an interesting uh, perspective. I've also arrived at that. If I'm 
going to love raising my frequency and not thinking that I need to be protected. I think that's the best protection, actually. And I think it's so important that we have teachers like you, because in my process, I had that course, it was online and I couldn't access these teachers directly. And uh, after the course was done, I didn't sort of have anybody to guide me. And I think it's so soothing and comforting to hear what you're saying uh, from someone who is so experienced as you are, because you can get very many questions and feel a bit alone in this. It's not like you can speak about this uh, with anybody. Uh, for those who are really curious and want to explore this, are you uh, or do you think we have like a silver cord that is attached uh, to our bodies uh, so that we cannot get lost? Because I think that's something people might be uh, afraid of. And my second question is, can we go anywhere? <gasps> oh, I'm getting <laughs> shivers. It's my favorite thing going anywhere. OK, so. To answer the silver cord question, um, we have to talk about, okay, if consciousness and reality are somehow entangled and the planes that we go to are somehow related to us, um, then there are what are called consensus realities. This is a term from, uh, again, Robert Monroe. So there is this idea that there are these belief system territories, different environments, different planes that we enter because of core beliefs. So, for example, a Christian might experience Christian heaven. Um, in Buddhism, you might experience one of the hell realms because it's within your belief system and therefore it's within your perception. And you have the doorway to actually go there because it's within your awareness. So if that is the case, if there are these consensus realities where people with collective beliefs can enter them, these collective planes of existence, then there must be things like the silver cord in regards to if many, many people believe in the silver cord, uh, then would I see the silver cord? I've never seen the silver cord and I've never had one. However, a couple of people have said they've seen the silver cord. So I'm thinking, well, does the silver cord objectively exist whether we see it or not? That's the question. And then the other question is, do I see the silver cord because I believe there's a silver cord to see in the first place? And again, this brings into idea, well, how much is there an objective reality and, and not effectively? But some people have seen it. Some people haven't seen it. What I will speak to is that I don't believe that if it is cut, you will die. Um, I definitely don't believe that. And I think I can probably speak on behalf of the world's top teachers that they would say the same thing um, as well with that. You can always come back to your physical body. In fact, it's hard to stay out. There's many techniques I have to teach people because they come out, they get so excited, they shoot back to their body or they get so scared. They shoot back to their body. An average experience is just a minute, it, not even a minute, particularly for beginners. And then a lot of the longest experience is probably about 20 minutes. This is what Graham Nichols has come to the conclusion of. Um, so it's hard to stay out of body. Although, because time isn't experienced in the same way, it could feel like you're there for a very long time. I've had a few very, very long experiences but because I'm a mature astral projector, I've got I've gone to myself at some point. I know this will end and I will wake up because it's true. That's what does happen. So you just say to yourself so you don't panic at some point this will end. But if you're having a really long experience, which is relatively rare. Amazing. Do your projection plan. Go to the places you want to go to. Choose where you want to go. Actually use it rather than kind of wandering around. I wasted a couple of really long OBEs in my beginning of my journey, just pottering around the streets and walking up to people and not really doing anything. Whereas now I teach in the workshops to have a plan. You have a plan, what are you gonna do? Why are you gonna do it? And this is related to your intention and your motivation. And you can even ask if you work with spirit guides, uh, power animals, um, your ancestors, you can ask them to come on board and help you to achieve these different aims that you might have in the astral plane so we don't waste these really wonderful transpersonal mystical experiences makes so much sense and i would love for you to share can we go anywhere what can we experience uh you mentioned oh i was just going around and talking to people who are those people can we encounter people that are also travelers so 
mm-hmm. I would love for you to share, you know, some examples of what you have experienced uh, to see what's possible uh, and address. Are there limitations or can we go anywhere? Oh, that in the same question, are there limitations or could we go anywhere? There's a yes to both of those and they both interact. We can go anywhere. There are ultimate, infinite possibilities that are endless. That is the first thing. Many of us don't get to here because there are limitations that we put in place ourselves that block us from accessing these things. This is our limiting beliefs the stories we tell ourselves, our fears, uh, unintegrated trauma that might stop us. In the Mexican Toltec tradition, they talk about how trauma keeps us bound to the body. And they have the opposite interpretation of Western psychology. Western psychology says, if you are so dissociated from your body, you will astral project, you you will have an OBE. They don't recognize astral projection, but they recognize the phenomena about body experiences. Whereas in the Mexican Toltec tradition, they say, No, you would have more out-of-body experiences if you weren't heavily traumatized, which keeps your astral body locked to your physical body. And if you work with chakra systems in the yogic system, they say something similar that you have to clear or purify or, um, yeah, the astral body before it's able to get to certain places. And that is related to the psyche, the mind and the trauma that we've been through. So we can go anywhere but we might take us some work to get there, but we can do it and we can all do it. We don't have to be a special monk or shaman person to do this. And then the first question that you had, what was that again, sorry? Yeah, and like, I'm curious. You said walking around and talking to people. Yeah. People, are you saying that you're seeing the physical people in this physical world and you're like, Mm -hmm. hello, or is it astral beings? Yeah. Uh, Because for someone who's totally new to this, how... What what are some of the things that you have experienced that are quite, you know, mind-blowing? I'm just curious to also yeah. learn a bit more about the universe through your experience. So what people report and what I've had, so you can you can come out of your body into we call this physical reality or everyday reality, and you can go and see people. You can't speak to them, but you can see people walking down the road, walking in the street. Sometimes if you get really close or you try to say something, they'll kind of stop and look like they've heard something or they've sensed something, but actually they don't really see you. I think in very rare occasions of people being able to influence, but that's extremely rare and there are very limited stories of that. Um, But then, so get this, you can have, you can enter also more subtle realms where you can have experience with entities or beings as their own thing, but then you can have what we call double perception. So this is what I mean about not having certain ideas about reality. You can come out into the physical world, see people on this plane walking down the road as they would do in real life. But then you can have an overlay of seeing, like you've got a second sight, um, a being in the same place, like it's interdimensional, two realities at the same time overlapping and you're in both at the same time. I'll give you an example of this. I came out of my body, I went into the park outside my window And I saw people and cars going down the street as normal. I just usually ignore them because I think they can just be a detour for doing deeper work. And I saw a being in the park. I think it was what would be called maybe a nature element or elemental. That's how I perceived it anyway through my education. And, um, And I went up to it and I was so excited. I was like, oh my God. Like I really wanted to talk to it and be friends or see, you know, see what it was doing. And I ran up to it with this enthusiastic energy and scared it off. (laughs) So it just flitted immediately, super quick, and it was gone. So I just scared it, Um, which, which again, that was new for me. So I, I hadn't realized that before. I should have maybe approached more cautiously in a more calm manner. Um, So this is I had these two perceptions of these different things overlaid and there's similar ones you can have in space as well or this is what people report and I've had um, seeing kind of civilizations uh, within space or different cosmic systems but then overlaying and seeing another solar system over that so rather than seeing things as operating 
in I'm, something is here, something is here, something is here in terms of linear space of time, actually it seems to be more interdimensional, more quantum. And this is when you can get into theories of quantum consciousness uh, and how things operate in that, in that way. That's a whole other thing. If if you've never heard of this, that's a whole other thing we could go, go into later down the line. But yeah, it seems to be more interdimensional. And this is where you can shift channels pretty quickly, where you can teleport from one place to another when you get when you get better and i'll tell you why that is advanced astral projections can teleport whereas beginners usually travel in a linear fashion from a to b so they'll come out their body go out the window down into the street fly along the road why are you flying along the road you don't you don't need to fly along the road you normally walk along the road but it's in our habitual awareness to walk so you experience yourself walking you can fly into the sky some people do fly into the sky but mo most of the part, we take our limitations, our life experience, and we experience it in that way. Whereas when you're advanced, you know, okay, I can just teleport to this place. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't, and that's to do with other factors that are involved. But generally speaking, you can go into space, you can go, some people go to a past life, some people go to the Akashic records, um, and then they have that experience. Whereas beginners, tend to just walk around like they would do in everyday reality. I can really recognize what you're saying. I was just walking around and didn't do much. I was just so amazed by walking around that that was possible. Uh, however, um, I have had a lot of lucid dreams. And in this conference that we spoke about, uh, Charlie Morley was also there. And I went to his workshop. And the same night, I had a big lucid dream. And it really helped me that you said, have a dream plan, have an intention, so you actually know, OK, I'm lucid. Let, let's do this. So after that, I've sort of opened up again, which I'm really excited about. But I'm having more lucid dreams. I'm like astral projection is like next level level for me. <laughs> but that um, demands a bit more dedication and and time. Uh, and speaking of time, I see the time is um, running now. But uh, what what is the wildest thing? Maybe the most beautiful thing that you have experienced outside of your body. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. So many things. This is going to be really hard to pick one thing because also they're all very different. You can have like amazement, uh, like profound experiences in different ways. So I'll give you an example. One would be a non-duality experience, meaning that you you don't experience um, sort of a separate reality, separate to yourself. Uh, which is very hard to put into to, into words, but you don't experience, you're not really seeing a landscape, you're not in a place, but you are in a place at the same time. It's more like a, a level of existence or being beyond our projections or, or concepts. So uh, the non-dual experience was very powerful for me and, and it made me realize how much we do create our own realities, which sounds maybe very simple, but yeah, I know I'm from a Buddhist background as well, so I have a slight bias, but it, it does it did make me think, oh my god, we create everything. <laughs> so the new the non-dual experience, which is often what people have when they experience have a oneness as well, that they are everything, um, was very profound. But then on the other level, there was one experience where I went to some sort of cosmic system and saw a huge civilization i didn't see beings because i saw space stations it was really clever it was all built into meteorite rocks so they'd worked out how to control the gravity of huge meteorites which were like sky bigger than skyscrapers they were like meteorites the size of countries and they'd built the civilization into it and worked out how to direct it so it's so because it was really it's really strong and stable again i don't know how i knew this but sometimes you just get no Knowings as well as perceiving stuff so I, I realized how this whole civilization works and I remember thinking that's really clever this is really clever technology like how have they done this and just seeing it like took my breath away it was such a moment of awe um, and then I was thinking <laughs> we need to get on it we need to like get to whatever this level is and you know there's theories like that there's some different sorts of theories one of them is that is us in the future in a different kind of one so it might not be like little green men aliens again this is like trying to leave our perceptions at home of what we think things are
but anyway so th this was a very profound experience and then there's one which i'll share a, a student of mine had an experience of a lifespan of a flower so she came out of her body and where you focus your because you don't have a body right so if i turn my head my focus is over there, but you don't have a physical body. So it's like you turn your eyes or your self-awareness and whatever you focus on seems to then, you you move towards that thing. So she saw a flower, it's very beautiful. She moved towards it and focused on it. And then she went into the flower and experienced what it would be to be a flower in its entirety of its lifespan. So you can have these very abstract experiences. You can have these very, vast experiences of other civilizations and then you can have the tr the ones where you meet something and integrate your own trauma as well so they're very um there's a spectrum that is very vast but most people only ever hear about the bit where you come out of your body and you look back and that's the main thing that's associated with it and i'm like no there are all of these different places where you can go and things you can do um but we're just not aware of it so it's part of my job is to inform people and you know whether or not people believe oh if you it's just all in your own mind well okay let's just say it is all in our own mind okay you have the access to this huge vast 3d reality where you can heal parts of yourself connect to areas of your own mind you've never experienced before great amazing or it is some sort of other interdimensional plane that it coexists with our own minds and is interdependent, interconnected with everything around us. And we can explore that and go there. Either one, amazing. And either way, we have the studies that show whatever we believe about the OBEs, our body experiences, they can, they impact ourself, ourself, literally ourself. That's what my research was about. How does it transform our sense of self? So either way, the techniques work and they can be really beneficial for our everyday life. Wow, thank you so much. This was so much fun. I love this. And to be honest, uh, out of body experiences and lucid dreaming has given me so much joy. For some reason, it has given me so much joy in my life, like uh, life spirit. I, I just feel like I become alive when I speak about it and hear about it. And just that story with that uh, being a flower, imagine that person writing a book about how it's like being a flower. We can learn so much and using this civilization. I mean, there's so much knowledge there that I think is important for humanity. Like you said, uh, evolutionary reasons. So I just love sharing more awareness around this because I think that we can... Uh, develop faster actually and uh, yeah understand more about the universe that is really beneficial for humanity so thank you so much and I'll, I'll leave your uh, website below and everything for those who are interested can learn more uh, thank you so much for being here today and all the best with uh, your astral projections and astral teachings Thank you. No, thank you for having me. I hope it was insightful and useful in some way and I didn't go off too much into philosophy, which I do tend to do sometimes. So I hope that you enjoyed it and that everyone got something from it. Thank you and much light from the UK and Norway. Bye bye. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you liked it, please subscribe and like the video or comment below and let me know what you think. And I would also love for you to check out my other videos on YouTube or wisdomfromnorth.com. See you in the next video.